Hey, hey, hey! It's Minute Mate time! <laughs> Here's what we're going to make today. A beautiful badge card. And to make a badge card, you will need a circle of card, a peg, a rectangle of card, some glue, a pair of scissors, some glitter and some coloured stickers. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Really, Toki? Well, I think I can do it. I will have to be quick, though, but don't worry. I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute! Stop the clock! There we go. Right, let's get our circle of card and glue it onto our peg. Let's put plenty of glue on. There we go. And then stick it on there like that. Now, Toki, pick a number. Number one. Number one. Right, OK. I'm going to bring a tray in and then draw a number one with my gloopy glue pot. There we go. There's a number one. And then get some glitter and put glitter all over like that. There we go. And shake it all over. And then if I shake it off, only the number one We'll stay. Halfway. Halfway. Goodness me. Right. I better get this rectangle of card and fold it in half like that and then make two snips at the top here and here. And I'm going to fold that strip back and that's going to help us pin on our badge. That's looking great. Now I can just stick on some stickers to the side like that and try and get as many as I can on. There we go. I think I can get one more on up there. I did it! That was close! That was close, Toki, you're right! But I made the badge card, and the best thing about it is that once you've sent it to someone, they can wear the badge as well! <laughs> and if you've got more than a minute, you can make all sorts of badge cards! This one has a different number. And this one is a really big badge card! Badge cards made in a minute. Why don't you try and make one? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Stick the circle of card to the peg, write a number in glue on the card, cover it with glitter and shake it off to reveal a glittery number. Fold the rectangle of card in half and cut two slits to make a flap. Fold it back to make a slot Slide the peg into the slot and add some stickers to finish your badge card. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Where is it? Oh, honestly, where could it be? Oh, have you ever put something in a secret place and then completely forgotten where you've put it? Oh, that's what I've done. Oh. Oh. It's my secret piggy bank that I was saving up all my coins in. Yeah, I'm sure I put it in the doodle drawers somewhere. No, it's not in here. Oh, I was sure that I put my pink piggy bank in those doodle drawers. Have you seen it anywhere? It's a pink piggy bank, sort of this colour, and uh, it looks like a pig, um, sort of like this one, and it holds money, um, sort of like this one. Hang on a minute. This is my piggy bank. Oh, but how did it get all the way over to these shelves from the doodle drawers? Oh, that is a bit of a mystery. But I tell you what, it gives me a great idea. A fantastic bookend secret safe to hide your secret arty stuff or favourite toys in. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! <coughs> Two cardboard cereal boxes. A glue stick. Some white and coloured paint. And a black felt tip pen. Whoa! And we also need a few big pebbles, and we can get those from a garden centre. I'll be back in a tick. Here they are. Here are our pebbles. Let's lay them out here. 
Now, to make your bookend secret safe, to hide your secret stuff inside, you have to get two empty cardboard cereal boxes like this with flaps on the lid. Now, we're going to cover both of these boxes, including the lids, in white paint. Now, this is a good tip, as it lets us cover everything with coloured paint much easier later on. Once your cereal boxes are dry, it's time to paint them with coloured paint. Now, make sure that you paint on the front, the edge and the back of your box, but don't paint on these edges here because they're going to be the pages of our books. Oh. Now let's paint this one red and this one blue. Now, for a really great effect, you can use a slightly lighter colour down this side of the book here, which is called the spine. And how about adding a rectangle on the front cover like this? And when both of your boxes are painted and dry, you can use a black pen to add some extra details. How about adding black lines on the white edges for the pages of the books and some rectangles down the spine and on the front to make it look like a realistic book? Don't they look good? Now we can stick them together. Brilliant! But these are a bit light at the moment, so to keep your books standing on the shelf, pop a couple of pebbles into each box. This will keep your books standing on the shelf and nicely weighed down. Now your bookend secret safe is ready for action. <laughs> and you can put whatever you want inside it. Maybe your favourite secret toy. Yeah. Right, come on then, Mr Dinosaur. In you go. That's it. And close it up and no one will know where your toy is. Well, no one except you, of course. <laughs> it's a terrific bookend secret safe. And there are lots of other designs you could try too. How about some small books? made out of fun-sized cereal boxes. Or you could make a really big one using very big cereal boxes like this. Fantastic! But it still doesn't solve the puzzle of how my secret piggy bank got all the way from the doodle drawers over to the shelves on his own. Oh well, I guess that will remain a mystery forever. <laughs> Minute make time! Come on! Here's what we're going to make today! A bubble bag! Great for keeping all your bits and pieces inside. Very nice. And to make one of these, you will need... a pair of scissors, a glue stick, some circles of felt, a long shoelace, a large rectangle of felt, a hole punch and a bubble envelope. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Well, I think I can do it, Toki, although I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, though, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute! Right, let's get our bubble envelope and very carefully, with some scissors, trim off this top end like this. That's it, we go all the way down. There we go. And then we're going to get our hole punch and make holes at the open end here, like that. Then let's get our shoelace and feed it through the holes like this. And then we're going to tie a knot on the other end. Here we go. Let's tie a knot. You're not going to do it! Very funny, Toki. I get it. Knot. Yeah, very funny. <laughs> There's our knot. OK, right, now let's put some glue on here. And we're going to put on, first of all, our rectangle of felt. On it goes. And then we're going to put our big circle on next. And then we're going to put our medium-sized circle 
and then we're going to put on a small circle, and we are finished! Only just! And if you've got more than a minute, you can make all sorts of bubble bags. <laughs> this one is made with felt stripes. And this one has a checked pattern. Bubble bags made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. <laughs> Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. First, take a bubble envelope and punch holes through the open end like this. Thread a long shoelace through the holes to make handles and tie knots in the ends. Glue on a large sheet of felt and decorate it with felt shapes to finish your bubble bag. Why don't you try making it in a minute? <laughs> Must be in here some... Ah, ha, ha, ha. Here it is, my crown! <gasps> Look at that! Now, have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a king or a queen? <laughs> I have. If I was a king, I'd have a crown and some kingly robes. Ooh! And I'd have a fantastic throne. <laughs> oh! And I'd have all the adoring people of Makerland. Hello, adoring people of Makerland! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'd have everything to make me into a brilliant king. <laughs> but wait a minute, I've forgotten something. Every king and queen needs a castle. And where am I going to get a castle from? Hey, A castle, a castle. Uh, ooh, a castle. That gives me a great idea. Let's make something. Try making a castle keeper to protect all of your special things. Let's make it! I better get changed first. We need to get some things from the doodle drawers. An empty tea bag box. Four kitchen roll tubes. An empty plastic food tray. Aha! Some paint. Some gloopy PVA glue, a pair of scissors, and a black pen. Whoa. Now, to make your very own castle keeper, like this one here, which is very useful for keeping all of your special bits and pieces in, you need to start off with a plastic food tray. Now, you need to get an adult to help you find one of these and thoroughly clean it out. Then, turn it upside down like this, because this is going to be the hill that the castle sits on top of. Then, get your tea bag box and sit it on top and make sure that the front flap opens like this. Now, we're going to get our four kitchen roll tubes and place them in each corner. That's here. Now, everything looks in the right position. I can glue everything in place. When it's dry, you can paint the castle. Now, grey looks really, really good. And you can even paint some dark grey rectangles to look like big stone bricks. Now, don't forget to paint the hill. This hill is going to be grassy green and we'll need a special mixture that's half gloopy glue and half paint. Let's give it a mix. There. Now, this will help our special painty mixture really stick onto the plastic tray. Now, to make the top of the turrets, that's these bits here, we need to cut six snips at the top of each of the kitchen roll tubes. Now, be careful because scissors are sharp. Oh, yes. Yeah. Let's start with this tube here. There's one. There, six snips. Let's put the scissors down. And now we're going to bend inside one of these flaps, bend one down like that, 
and then leave the next one standing up and push the next one down. Leave the next one up and then push that one down. And that gives us our turrets. Now let's do the same on all of the other kitchen roll tubes. Next, we can add some extra details with a black pen. Add a door, some windows and brick details. You can even add some light and dark green paint to look like moss. But it's up to you. You can add as much detail or as little as you like. <laughs> wow, it's your very own Castle Keeper. <laughs> there it is. So let's open it up and you can keep whatever you like inside. <laughs> like all your arty bits and bobs. Okay. Perfect, very useful. And you can even try to make some other types of castles as well. How about making a fairy tale castle using two boxes and painting it pink and purple? Or even, ooh, a really big castle with three boxes and lots of short tubes. Oh, I really like this one. Let's take a closer look. Oh, now this really is a castle fit for a king. <laughs> Why don't you try making your very own castle keeper to keep all your precious things in? Oh, great, it's minute make time. <laughs> Here's what we're going to make today, a clacker drum. It's great fun, look. <laughs> and to make one, you will need some sticky tape, a pencil, an empty cheese box. Now you need one with a lid like that, a piece of string. Now that's got to be twice the length of your cheese box. You need a ball of sticky tack and two large beads. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! I can't believe you're saying that, Toki. I think I could do it, although I will have to move very quickly. Don't worry, though, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute! Start the clock! Let's go! Right, let's get our cheese box and a pencil and very carefully push through to make a hole with the pencil. Then get our ball of sticky tack and squidge it in place so the pencil stays firm. Then let's put the lid back on like that and lay our string on top. We can stick that into position with some sticky tape right across the middle. There we go. Now let's get one of our beads and feed it onto one end. There we go. And then tie a knot. Here we are. Right, now let's do the same on the other side. There's the other bead, like this. And let's feed it on here. Through it goes, like that. Go on, through you go. There we are. And let's tie a knot on this end as well. And once I've done that... Get a move on! I'm going as fast as I can, Toki. There's the other knot. And I have done it! Woo! Only just... <laughs> yes, and if you've got more than a minute, you can decorate your clacker drum. Look at this one here. It's got a circle of paper on each side. In fact, you can make all sorts of clacker drums in the same way. Ooh! This one's painted with a swirly pattern. Ho-ho! And look at this brightly coloured clacker drum with lots of beads. Clacker drums made in a minute. Why don't you try and make one? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Push a hole in the side of a cheese box with a pencil and hold it steady with sticky tack. Put the lid back on and tape the string across the middle. Tie a bead to both ends of the string to finish your clacker drum. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? <laughs> oh, don't mind me. I'm just practicing my silly faces. Look at this. <laughs> oh, that's a really good one. Can you make silly faces? Go on, pull a funny face. The sillier, the better. Go on. Brilliant! <laughs> that was a very funny face. 
and all of our funny, silly faces have given me a great idea. Let's make something. Make a funny face of your own, like this great gargoyle that you can stick on your wall or bedroom door. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> A paper plate and an old newspaper. <laughs> some scraps of cardboard, some gloopy PVA glue and some sticky tape. <laughs> and some paint. <laughs> oh -ho! Now we also need some play sand, which you can find in a toy shop. I'll be back in a tick. <laughs> I've got it. Here it is, our play sand. Now, take a look at this gargoyle. A gargoyle is a funny creature made out of stone that you might find on the front of an old building. Now, to make one, you need to start with its mouth. And for that, we need a sheet of newspaper. And we're going to roll it up like this. Then we're going to give it a little twist and stick it together with sticky tape. Now we're going to bend it around into a loop shape and stick this together with more tape. And then give it a squeeze into a mouth shape. Now we need to bring in our paper plate and turn it upside down because this is going to be the face. So let's put on our mouth and stick it into position. Great! Now to make a nose, we get another piece of newspaper and scrunch it up into a sort of pear shape. Tape it together and then stick it in the middle of the face. Now we can roll up two small balls of newspaper for nostrils. And then we can tape them either side of the nose. Now for the eyes, use half a sheet of paper to make thinner twists. Let's roll it up. And again, we can use some sticky tape to hold it in position. Now we can loop it round. Now you can always tear off a bit of the loop to make your eye smaller and then stick it together. And now I'm going to put it here next to the nose. Now, of course, we need a pupil in the middle for that. We need to scrunch up a ball a smaller piece of newspaper and that's going to go in the middle of the eye shape and then do the same on the other side. <laughs> he looks very silly, doesn't he? And now we can add some extra detail by cutting out some cardboard squares for gargoyle teeth, maybe some cardboard triangles for ears. Be careful though because scissors are sharp. Oh, here are my scissors. Here's my cardboard. Start with the teeth. Now, cutting cardboard can be a bit fiddly, so it might be a good idea to ask an adult to help you. Then you can place them onto your gargoyle face and do the same with two cardboard ears and stick it all down. <laughs> Great! Now comes the messy bit. Put your gargoyle on an old tray. There we go. Now we're going to cover the whole thing in a layer of gloopy glue. OK, now we need to be quick about this because we don't want the glue to dry. We're going to sprinkle play sand all over it. Then shake off the extra sand and leave it to dry. Now you can paint it a nice stony grey colour Add some white highlights and use black paint for the darker details. 
And there it is. Your very own funny gargoyle. And you can make lots of different gargoyle faces. This one's got big ears and extra green paint to look like there's moss growing on it. Or how about making a big gargoyle with a sticking out tongue? All of them are brilliant, funny faces! <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I think you've got a very funny face too, Mr Maker. Oh, well, thank you very much. You're too kind. Oh, great! It's Minute Make time. Come on. <laughs> Here's what we're going to make today. A glittery box. Perfect for keeping all your bits and pieces inside. Now, to make a glittery box, you will need... A round box with a lid, like this. A brush, some glitter, and a special gloopy mixture made from half paint and half gloopy glue. You'll also need some shiny gems and some sparkly stars, which you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <coughs> I've got them. Here they are. Our shiny gem and our sparkly stars. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Well, I think I can do it, although I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, though, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute! Right, get an old tray or a mat, put your round box in the middle and the gloopy mixture needs to completely cover it like this. Here we go, let's cover the whole thing. You can use whatever colour you like, obviously. But I think blue will look rather good. That's it, around we go. Make it a bit more on the brush. Here we are. It's messy, this, but it's lots of fun. Get a move on! There we go. Yeah, that's looking good. Right, now I can put on the shiny gem in the middle. And now the stars. Now, of course, these will stick because there's gloopy glue in our mixture. There we go. Put that one down there as well. Now, as a finishing touch, let's get some glitter and sprinkle it all over like that. Put some around the side as well. And some around there. Give it a little bit of a shake. And you can just roll the edge in it. And I've done it! Only just... Yes, but if you've got more than a minute, why not try some other ideas? How about a yoghurt pot covered in blue glitter and silver gems? You can even make a really big glittery box with lots of gems and shiny stickers on it. Great glittery boxes made in a minute. Why don't you try and make one? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Cover the box with a mixture of paint and gloopy glue. Place on shiny gems and stars and sprinkle on glitter to finish your fantastic glittery box. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Ho oh, ho! It's Minute Make Time! Here's what we're going to make today. It's a great game that looks like an ice cream cone. Let's give it a go. The idea being that you catch the ice cream in the cone! <laughs> And now, to make this, you will need a pair of scissors, a brush, some gloopy PVA glue, some sticky tape, a sponge ball, a circle and a square of tissue paper, and half a circle shape of paper or card. Oh, and not forgetting a little bit of wool. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Oh, well, I think I can do it, Toki. I will have to be very quick, though. But don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute! Let's get our half circle of brown paper or card and make it into a cone shape like that. I'm going to stick it with some sticky tape. Yeah, that's in position. There's the cone. Now let's make the ice cream. That's the sponge ball. But we also need the circle of tissue paper. I'm just going to trim around the edges here to make it into a droopy, drippy looking sauce. There we go. Be careful! Round and round. I'm being careful, Toki, don't you worry. There we go. Let's get some gloopy glue on our ball now. 
There we go, on the top there. Put plenty on. And then stick our sauce on the top. There we go. Then let's scrunch up the red piece of tissue paper. That's going to be a cherry on the top. There we go, there's the cherry. And then let's get the wool. Stick that inside the cone, like that. Stick the wool to the ball. And then you're ready to play. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> yes, that was close. But it makes a game that looks good enough to eat. Can I eat it? No, you can't, Toki. This isn't for eating. It's for playing with. So let's have a game. Here we go. Ho-ho! <laughs> <laughs> I did it! And if you've got more than a minute, you could try some other ideas. Ooh! How about a mint ice cream with painted chocolate drops and a pom-pom chocolate on top? Ooh! Or you could even make it into a flower by adding some paper petals around the cone. Fantastic games made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Roll half a circle of brown paper or card into a cone shape and stick it together. Trim the pink tissue paper circle into a wobbly sauce shape and then glue it onto the sponge ball. Scrunch up the red tissue paper and glue it on top for the cherry. Take one end of the wall to the cone and the other to the sponge ball. And your ice cream cone game is finished! Why don't you try and make it in a minute? <laughs> ah, here's a good idea. Find yourself a box like this one here and fill it with lots of cardboard and plastic things that you might normally throw away. You never know when something might come in handy for a really clever make, like, yes, this empty cardboard kitchen roll tube. It could become... Ooh, a telescope! Ha-ha! Ahoy there, shipmate! Let's set sail for Maker Island! <laughs> or this roll could become... a saxophone! Or it could be... Oh, it could be... Um, it could be... Uh, wait a minute. Well, I've just had a great idea. Let's make something. Make a gigantic pencil case pencil with an old cardboard tube. Perfect for keeping all your pens and pencils inside. Let's make it as well as a cardboard tube, we'll need some other things from the doodle drawers. Some paint. Some tissue paper and some gloopy PVA glue. Ooh. A pink sponge and some white paper. And some sticky tape and a black pen. Whoa! <laughs> now, to make your very own pencil pencil case, like this one here, it's very useful. Look, you can open it up, pop in your pencils, and then they all stay inside. Fantastic! Now, we need to draw a circle on some white paper that's slightly bigger than our cardboard tube. So we're going to draw it around here. Now, a good tip for doing that is to draw around something that's round, like a small plastic bowl, like this. There we go. A perfect circle. Now, we're going to cut this out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. <laughs> Next, make a snip in this circle just up to the middle. Now that's going to be starting here and going up just to about there. Now this snip will help us curl this circle into a cone shape. Watch, here we go. Now this is a bit fiddly and slightly tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you. There we go, there's our cone. Now we can use some sticky tape to stick it in place. Great! 
So there is our cone. Now this is going to be the tip on the end of our pencil. So we need to use some sticky tape to stick our cone onto the end of our cardboard tube. Next, we need to cover our pencil shape with a layer of tissue paper and a very special gloopy mixture, which is made up of half gloopy glue and half water. Let's give it a mix. Now let's cover the whole thing and then leave it to dry. When it's dry, we can paint our pencil. Now you can choose whatever colours you like, but how about we do a yellow pencil with a silver band and a pink rubber on the end? And when the paint is dry, we can add some extra detail with a black pen. That's a point at the end of the pencil, some nice lines running all the way along, and then maybe some rivets at the end holding the rubber in place. <laughs> Finally, to stop all of our pens and pencils falling out of the other end, we need to draw around the open end of our pencil pencil case onto some pink sponge. There we go. That gives us a lovely perfect circle. Now we're going to cut this out very carefully, but this is a bit tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you with this bit. <laughs> now we can pop all of our pens and pencils into the end of our pencil pencil case. Here they go. And get our foam circle, squeeze it in, and it holds everything in place. <laughs> there, isn't that great? A really handy pencil pencil case. Fantastic. And you can make any sort of pencil case that you like. How about a small pencil pencil case made out of a really short tube? Or how about a really big pencil pencil case made from a really big cardboard tube? Fantastic! Those cardboard tubes just keep getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> Imagine if there was one even bigger than that. No, that would never happen. <laughs> wow, what a knockout. <laughs> Although I think I'm going to have trouble finding a box big enough to put this in. <laughs> it's minute make time. Come on, everyone. And here's what we're going to make today. A jazzy pot that holds a lot. Perfect for all your bits and pieces. Now, to make a jazzy pot like this, you will need a plastic tray, lots of bits and pieces like sequins, beads and small toys, a small plastic plant pot and a rolling pin. Plus, we will need some air drying clay that you can find in an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <laughs> I've got it. There's the air drying clay. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? Not a chance. Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry. I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Great. Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Right, let's get our lump of air drying clay and roll it into a flat sausage shape. There we go, just keep rolling. Roll and roll and roll like that. This is looking good. Now let's get our plant pot and cover it in the clay. Here we go. We'll try and cover the whole thing like this and then squidge it down on the bottom there and then overlap it and push everything down to make a pot shape. There we go, this is looking good. Halfway there. Halfway already, oh no. There we go, that's nice. And when it's completely covered in clay, we can cover it in the bits and pieces. Get plenty on and you just push them all into place like this. You can do it with your hands like this. You can use whatever bits you like. Ten seconds. 
Oh, 10 seconds to go. Just keep pushing. Got a few seconds left. There we go. Here's my jazzy pot. Fantastic. Just in time. Phew, that was close. And when it's dry and you've got more than a minute, you could cover it in gloopy PVA glue to keep all the bits in place. Yeah, why not try a really big one with a big plant pot? This one is covered in buttons and it's great for keeping your scissors and paintbrushes in. Why not try nuts, bolts and washers? Perfect for your felt tip pens. Jersey pots made in a minute. Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Roll the air drying clay out with a rolling pin. Wrap it around the plant pot so it's totally covered. Then roll it in a tray with all your bits and pieces to make a fantastic jazzy pot. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Oh, I'd love to go on holiday, especially an adventure holiday, like a super jungle safari. <gasps> Jungles are really exciting. There are so many things to see. Look, there's an elephant. And there's a snake. And oh, there's a ferocious plant. Oh, oh, I wouldn't like to meet one of those close up. I'm getting out of here. Oh, 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 what a dream. But it gives me a great idea. Let's make something. Make a super snappy jungle plant with terrific teeth. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> An empty yogurt pot with a bendy corner. Some green pipe cleaners and some coloured paper. Aha, some paint. Some sticky tape and some glue. A plant pot and a lump of modelling clay. Whoa! Now, to make your very own snappy plant, ooh, you need to get a clean yoghurt container with a bendy corner like this. Now, you might want to ask an adult to help you find one of these. And then you're going to fold along that crease there. <laughs> like that. And now we need to get four pipe cleaners like this. And whilst holding them all together, twist them up. There, but don't twist all the way to the end because you need two pieces on this side to stick to the small corner of your yogurt container and these other two pieces to stick over here to the larger side of the container. And we can stick them in place with some sticky tape. <laughs> now you can paint the inside of your yogurt pot red and the outside of it green like this. Now to paint them, we're going to make two painty mixtures that are made up of half paint and half gloopy glue. Let's give them a mix. This will help the painty mixture really stick to the yoghurt pot. There we go. Now we can start painting. When it's dry, it should look like this. Green on the outside and red on the inside. Let's just put it to one side for now because we're going to get a brown piece of paper like this and we're going to fold it in half and then we're going to make a snip just here along that folded edge. Be careful when you use scissors because they're sharp, you know. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. There. There we go. Now if we open it up, we've got ourselves a little hole. And that hole is perfect for pushing our pipe cleaners through. So we can push them through that hole like that, feeding it through so it's about halfway through. And then with the pipe cleaner this end, we can just roll it up into a kind of rough ball shape and then scrunch the brown paper all around it. Just scrunching it into a tight ball. 
Right, I'm just going to pop it down for a little while now because we need to get a little plant pot like that and a ball of modelling clay. Now, if you haven't got modelling clay, don't worry, you could use a pebble because this is going to go in the plant pot and weigh it down so our plant doesn't topple over. Let's get some gloopy glue and put in a good dollop. Now we can bring back our plant and push it into the plant pot. Very nice. It's starting to take shape. Let's just move it over here for now because we need to draw some teeth and some leaves. For that we need, of course, white paper or card for the teeth. And for the leaves, we need green paper or card. Now we can cut all of these pieces out. Now we need to glue the leaves onto the pipe cleaners. <laughs> and we need to stick the teeth inside the yogurt pot too. <laughs> and now you have a very snappy plant. <laughs> Ooh. Or you could try some other ideas. How about a purple spotty plant with yellow stickers for spots? Or even a really big tropical plant with lots of teeth. All fantastic ideas. Snappy plants. Give them a go. They look terrifying, don't they? <laughs> but you're not scary, are you? I think you'll find that I am. Hey, careful, you. Oh, great. It's Minute Mate time. Here's what we're going to make today. A toothbrush holder whale. And to make it, we'll need a plastic knife an old toothbrush, and we'll also need some air drying clay and some googly eyes. Now we can get these from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <coughs> I've got them. <laughs> Here they are. Googly eyes and our air drying clay rolled into two small balls and one big one. Now, do you think it's possible to make this <coughs> in just one minute? No way. Well, I think I can do it, although I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute. Get the big ball of clay and just flatten the bottom by pushing it like that. Then, with your fingers, squeeze out a tail shape. That's it. Like this. There we are. Very nice indeed. Now, if I turn it round, we can give our whale a face. And we do that very carefully with a plastic knife. That gives the whale a nice smile. Give him two eyes. There's one eye there. And there's the second eye going on. There it is. Right. Let's get the two small balls of clay and we're going to push them into the side of the whale's body like that and flatten them slightly. That gives him fins. And then if we get a toothbrush and stick it in the middle, you've got yourself a toothbrush holder whale. Stop the clock. What a fantastic toothbrush holder. And if you've got more than a minute, you can paint it a nice bright colour like this blue one here. In fact, you can make all sorts of toothbrush holders. Like this hedgehog. It's made out of a pointy ball of clay and it's got lots of toothbrushes for spikes. Or how about a spiky caterpillar made out of five balls of clay? A toothbrush holder whale made in a minute. Why don't you try and make one? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Flatten the bottom of the large ball of clay. Make a tail. And a smile with a plastic knife. Add the googly eyes. Stick on the small balls of clay to make fins. And finally, push in your toothbrush to make your toothbrush hold a whale. Lovely. Why don't you try making it in a minute? Oh. I'm just reading this book about birds. It's very interesting. As well as being able to swim and fly, birds can also sing. Yes, it's true. <laughs> I wonder if they can do anything else. Do you think they can play games? Hmm. 
On my beak, Mr. Penguin! Goal! <laughs> no, that's taking it too far. Birds playing games, honestly. <laughs> or is it? Flapping feathers, I'm having an idea. Let's make something. Make a fantastically funny bird hoop game to play with your friends. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> a large washing liquid bottle with a large handle. <laughs> some tissue paper and a pen. Some feathers. Some paint. <laughs> some gloopy PVA glue and a colourful paper plate. Whoa! Now we also need some play sand, which you can find in a toy shop. I'll be back in a tick. <laughs> I've got it! <laughs> Our play sand. Now have a look at this funny bird hoop game. And here's how it works. You have a hoop, you have a funny bird, throw the hoop over the bird, and hooray! It's a fantastic game. Now to make one, you need to start off with a large washing liquid bottle like this, and you need to make sure that it's nice and clean. Now it's a good idea to get an adult to help you with this bit. Then, unscrew the top, and we're going to very carefully pour in some play sand. Now, we need to pour in just enough sand to make it nice and heavy so the bottle doesn't topple over. Now we can screw the lid back on tightly. Now we're going to cover the entire bottle in ripped up pieces of tissue paper and a very special gloopy mixture, which is made out of half gloopy glue and half water. Let's give it a mix. There we go, it's nicely mixed up now. And we're going to make sure that we cover the whole bottle in the gloopy mixture and the pieces of tissue paper. And when we're finished, we'll leave it to dry. <coughs> when it's nice and dry, we can start painting. How about we paint on two large white dots for eyes, a nice bright orange beak, and then you can paint the rest of the bird whatever colour you like. It's up to you. But I think I might do this bird blue. When the paint is dry, we can add some details with a black pen. And for a finishing touch, let's give our bird some nice feathery wings. So for that, of course, we need our feathers here. Here they are. They're all ready to be put on with some gloopy glue. Now press on your feathers like this and then hold them down in place until they dry. And then do the same on the other side. What a fantastic feathery effect. He looks great. Let's just move our bird over to here because now we need to make a hoop with a paper plate. A nice coloured one like this looks really good. We also need a ball of modelling clay and a very sharp pencil. And what we're going to do is put the ball of modelling clay underneath the plate like that. And then very carefully with the sharp pencil, we're going to push through the middle of the plate into the clay to make a hole. Then if we take out the pencil, remove the clay, like that, we're left with a plate with a hole in the middle. Now this hole will help us cut out the middle of the plate. Now we're going to cut very carefully all the way around here. Now this is a bit tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you with this bit. <laughs> 
There we go. Now be very careful with your scissors. Because they're sharp, you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> you can make lots of rings. So as many people as you like can play. Fantastic! And you don't have to stop there. How about trying some other ideas? This one has a green body and a winking eye. And this one's a multicoloured bird with multicoloured feathers. Or you can use a much smaller bottle for a glittery baby bird. Now all that's left to do is have a game. Now remember, the aim of the game is to throw the hoop over the bird. Drum roll, please. <laughs> oh, that was close. Hey, I did it. <laughs> well done, Mr. Maker. Thank you, Mr. Crazy Bird. It was great fun playing with you. <laughs> minute make time. Oh, great. It's minute make time. Come on. <laughs> And here's what we're going to make today. A slot plane. <laughs> Sorry, I was being a bit silly there, wasn't I? Or some might say, plain silly. <laughs> no? OK, well, to make a slot plane, you will need a pair of scissors, a glue stick, a black pen, a triangle of white card, a sausage shape of white card, and a large rectangle of white card. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Oh, I see. Well, I think I can do it, but I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, though, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute! Stop the clock! Let's go! Let's get our triangle and our sausage shape of white card. And if we glue the triangle on the end, that will make a good fin for our aeroplane. There we go. Now I'm going to turn it over and fold it in half like that and then make a snip very carefully along this folded edge. That's going to make a slot. Now if we open that up, we can make ourselves a wing by drawing a wing shape on this rectangular piece of card there. Now I'm going to get a pair of scissors and cut this wing shape out very carefully. Be careful! I'm being careful, Toki, don't you worry. Here comes the wing. There we go. Right now, hopefully, our wing will slot into our plane. Let's have a look. Yes, it does. That looks great. OK, now I'm going to get my black pen and draw on a window at the front and then windows all the way along. There's one there, one there, one there and one there. I've done it! Stop the clock! <laughs> Phew! That was close. But if you've got more than a minute, you can always tape on a piece of string and ask someone to hang it up for you. Hee <laughs> hee! Plus, there are lots of other designs that you can try too. What about a stunt plane made with red card and a pointy body? Or even a cartoon style jet with a big round body and short round wings. Slot planes! Made in a minute! Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. To make a slot plane, glue the triangle to one end of the oval card. Draw a wing shape on the bottom edge of your card and cut it out. Fold the plane in half. Make a small snip and slot the wings through the middle. Draw windows at the front and down the sides of your slot plane. And then ask someone to hang it up. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? <laughs> this book that I'm reading is brilliant. It's so exciting. Listen to this. It was a cold and stormy night. The wind howled. And the rain poured. As old Albert Maker, the famous fisherman, struggled against the high seas in his tiny fishing boat, he'd hit a rock. 
and he was sinking fast. What was he going to do? He couldn't see dry land. Then, out of nowhere, came bursts of light, one after the other. A lighthouse! I'm saved! And by the light of the lighthouse, old Albert Maker made his way safely home. Wow, Albert was really brave. You wouldn't catch me sailing on the high seas, no way. <sighs> Ooh, this gives me an idea though. Let's make something. A fantastic lighthouse made out of an empty crisp tube that can light up your room. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> An empty cardboard crisp tube and a clear plastic jar with a lid. Some newspaper and a black pen. Some paint. A piece of cardboard and an empty juice carton. Some glue and some strips of red card and a torch. Oh, now to make your very own lighthouse, like this one here, first make sure that your juice carton is smaller than your piece of cardboard. Let's have a look. Yes, it is. Now we can use gloopy PVA glue to stick this on. <laughs> Now that's in position, we can glue on our crisp tube on top of the juice carton. And when you've done that, leave it to dry. Then we scrunch up some newspaper to cover our juice carton and the cardboard, because this is going to be the rocks at the bottom of the lighthouse. Now the more scrunched up you make it, the better it will look. glue scrunched up newspaper all over the carton. Now it's dry, we can start painting it. Let's do the crisp tube white. And we can paint the newspaper grey, adding some white and blue paint on top of the grey to make the crushing waves underneath the lighthouse. Now, we need to add some red stripes to our lighthouse, like this. Now we do that by adding our red strips of card. Now put glue on one end of one of the bits of card. And then, if we wrap it around the tube so it overlaps and glue it together like that, we get a stripe. Fantastic! Start off by doing the bottom one, then do a stripe at the top and then one in the middle. Now it's dry, we can add some windows and a door with a black pen. <laughs> now, let's take the lid off our plastic jar, like that. Turn the jar upside down and then glue the lid on top. Let's use a glue stick for this. Just put that on there. Perfect. And if we put it on top, we've got ourselves a lighthouse. Fantastic! Now, let's light it up by finding a torch that fits inside. This one looks good. If we turn it on and pop it in, we can put that on top. Look, it looks fantastic! Now let's see if it works. Let's turn down the lights. There, you've got your very own lighthouse to help you see in the dark. Doesn't it look realistic? Ah, I love the smell of the sea, the crashing waves. But then again, 
maybe I prefer dry land. <laughs> a periscope? Oh, yes, shipmates. I can see land. I can see... Wait a minute. Who's that? Oh, it's you! I was just playing behind the sofa. I'm pretending that this is my submarine and I'm the submarine captain. Yeah, look, I've even got my own periscope. This helps me find things. I'm looking for my lost pencils at the moment. Yeah, maybe you can help me and my submarine find them. OK, let's do it. Right, I'm coming back aboard. Dive, dive, dive! <laughs> Where are they? Well, they're not on the table. No, that's empty. Well, no, they're not on there. Hang on a minute. Zoom in, please. Hooray! We've found the pencils. Thanks for your help, everyone. That was great fun. And it's given me a great idea. A super submarine that's also a pencil case. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the Doodle Drawers! <laughs> a plastic fabric conditioner bottle with a nice wide neck and... a lid. A washing ball with a flat bottom. Plastic containers and pots. Some paint, some tissue paper and a black pen. And some masking tape and some gloopy PVA glue. Whoa! Now, to make your very own fantastic submarine pencil case, like this one here, you first have to get an adult to help you thoroughly clean and dry out a fabric conditioner bottle and all of the other plastic containers. Now, make sure you've got a plastic pot with a lid like this one here and also a small plastic bottle with a flip-up lid like that. Let's start putting all of our bits together. Let's put the fabric conditioner bottle here. That's going to be the main body of our submarine. And let's put the pot on this end here at the back. There we go. Now let's take the washing ball and put it on the end of that pot. And how about the plastic bottle with the flip-up lid? That can go up here, because that's where our periscope's going to be. And so our pencil case can stand up. Let's put the lid on the bottom there. Great! Everything looks in position now, so we can stick it all together with some masking tape. Now, you can put on as much tape as you like to do this, but make sure that you don't put any tape over this open end of the washing ball, because that's where all our pencil sharpeners and rubbers are going to go. Now we can cover it in a layer of gloopy glue and tissue paper. Now you could use strips of yellow tissue paper like this or any colour you like really. Now the more layers of tissue paper you put on, the better it will look. Add as many layers as you want and then leave it to dry. And when it's dry, you can paint on some details. How about some porthole windows and some stripes on the side? Now, cover your plastic lids with a special mixture that's half paint and half gloopy glue. Let's give it a mix. Finally, when your submarine is all nice and dry, you can add some extra details with a black pen. <laughs> Doesn't it look great? Now, all we need to do is pop some pencils into our new submarine pencil case. And I know just where those pencils are. Won't be a tick. I've got them. Now, we can put anything we like in our new pencil case. We could put big things like these pencils in this end. And we could put smaller things like these rubbers in this end. 
Fantastic! Now I'll never lose them again! <coughs> My pencils! Where have they gone this time? It's minute make time! <coughs> Here's what we're going to make today, an easy tambourine! <laughs> and to make one of these, you will need an empty sweet tube, a glue stick, three pieces of pipe cleaner, a strip of card and three pet balls that you can get from a pet shop. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Oh, really, Toki? Well, I think I can do it, although I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, though, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Great! Let's make it in a minute! OK, let's get our three pet balls and our three pieces of pipe cleaner, and we're going to feed the pieces of pipe cleaner through the balls like that. There's one. And let's do another one. There it goes. Through. And then the last piece of pipe cleaner goes through this pet ball. Now let's get our strip of card, and if we lay it out, we're going to put one at the top here first. Now I'm going to wrap the pieces of pipe cleaner around. There we go, like that, so it's in place. Then I'm going to put one in the middle. There we are, wrapping that round again, so it's nice and tight. It's in position. And last but not least, I'm going to put one at the bottom. Faster, faster! I'm going as quick as I can! And Toki. Right, let's make sure they're all in position. I think they are. Yes. Right, let's get our sweet tube and put some glue on both ends. That's that end and that end there. Oh, I better hurry up. And if we stick our strip there and there, we can make some music with our tambourine. Only just. Not bad, eh? And if you've got more than a minute, you could decorate the handle by painting it. Nice! You could even add some stickers to decorate it. Ooh, or why not try using a bigger sweet tube and lots more balls? Hey, an easy tambourine made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Feed the pipe cleaner pieces through the pet balls. Wrap the ends of the pipe cleaners around the card and space them out like this. Finally, stick the card to the tube and your easy tambourine is complete. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Oh, just look at the weather outside. It's so stormy. Oh, that's it. I'm going on holiday. <laughs> Time to pack my things. <laughs> there. <laughs> I think I've got everything. <laughs> oh. oh, I could probably do with somewhere to put all my things, but I haven't got a suitcase. Not yet, anyway. This gives me an idea. Let's make something. Try making a fantastic box suitcase to keep all of your bits and pieces in. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! <laughs> a cardboard cereal box. Some gloopy PVA glue and some tissue paper. Some paint. Sticky tape and some spongy kitchen cloths. A pencil, a black pen, and a silver pen. Ooh. Whoa! Now, we also need a sticky material fastener, and you can get that from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got it. Here we go. Here is the sticky material fastener. Now, to make a brilliant box suitcase like this one here, first make four holes in the front of your cardboard cereal box with a sharp pencil. Now, you might want to ask an adult to help you with this bit, as it is a bit tricky. Now, we're going to make a hole in all four corners. 
Now we're going to use these holes to cut three lines that's along here, here, and here. Now this is going to make the flap of our suitcase. Be careful though, because scissors are sharp. <laughs> and again, you might want to ask an adult to help you. Now, find two spongy kitchen cloths like this, and then cut them into two strips, like this. <laughs> there we go. Now these two strips here are going to be the handle and the strap on our suitcase. So bring the box back in. <laughs> there it is, and there's our flap. And we're going to stick the handle on top here with some sticky tape. And we're also going to put the strap over here so that it keeps everything inside when the suitcase is closed. Now, to keep the strap closed, you will need a sticky material fastener. Now, that's made up of two pieces. There's one rough piece and <laughs> a smooth piece. <laughs> now, if you stick the smooth piece to the rough piece, they stick together. And then you can pull them apart. Look at that, it's magic. So let's stick them on to our suitcase. <laughs> okay, stick one piece to the suitcase and the other to the strap like this. And when they stick together, it'll keep the suitcase closed and everything inside. Look at that. Fantastic. <laughs> Now we need to cover our suitcase in a layer of tissue paper and a special gloopy mixture that's made up of half gloopy glue and half water. Let's give it a mix and start laying down our pieces of tissue paper. When it's all nice and dry, you can paint it any colour you like. But how about you paint brown squares on the corners and brown on the strap and the handle. You could do orange on the edges and maybe even a nice bright green on the rest of the suitcase. In fact, you can even paint inside the suitcase as well. It's up to you. Well, it's looking really good now, but we can make it look even better by adding some extra detail with a black pen and a silver pen. Mm. <laughs> there, all done. And now your suitcase is ready to carry all of your bits and pieces. And there are lots of box suitcases that you could make how about one made out of a small cereal box and painted blue and yellow? And this one, it's made from a big cereal box that's painted blue, red and brown. Fantastic! Oh, look! The sun's coming out! I don't need to go on holiday after all! I can just sit back and relax. <laughs> hey, it's minute make time. <laughs> It's Minute Make Time, and here's what we're going to make today. It's a jazzy spinner. Whoa, look at it go. Ooh, it's made me a bit dizzy. <laughs> now, to make a jazzy spinner, you will need a sharp pencil, a ball of modelling clay, a glue stick, a round lid from a cardboard cheese box like that, and also a circle of tissue paper that fits on top some glitter and some stick-on jewels that you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. There we go. There are our jewels. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it 
at the end. And you can help at home by cheering along. Here we go, everyone. Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Right, the first thing to do is to glue our tissue circle on top of our lid. So put plenty of glue on there with the glue stick and then stick the tissue paper circle on top. There we go, that looks nice. And now let's put glue all around the edge of our lid. Put plenty on. This can be a bit messy, but you've got to get lots on. That's it, there we go, all the way around. Because this is going to have glitter put on it. Here we go, so let's get our plate of glitter and roll it in. There we go, oh, that's looking good. There we go, round and round it goes. Get plenty of glitter on, that's looking good. Okay, let's move that now, we need to put on our jewels. Oh, not long to go now. Here we go, let's put all four on. There's one there, one there, and now we need to put our pencil in. So for that, we put our modeling clay underneath and very carefully push the pencil through. I've done it! Whoa, look at it go! Jazzy spinners made in a minute. There are lots of other types you could try too. This one's covered in lots of shiny stars. And this one's got a glittery spiral on it. Why don't you give it a go? Here's a reminder of how to do it. So why don't you try and make it in a minute? Ooh, <laughs> there you be! <laughs> what? What is it? What? Huh? Oh no! Oh dear! <laughs> there! Now what does every good pirate need? Treasure! And my treasure's made out of chocolate! Now where did I put it? Hang on. Who are? Who are? Who are? <laughs> Ooh -ah! Ooh -ah! Oh no! I put my chocolate treasure in my pocket and now it's melted! Oh! Ooh. This gives me an idea though. Let's make something! Let's make it! We'll need some things from the Doodle Drawers! Some paint, some paint brushes and a white pencil. A box with a flip-up lid. Some pasta and some gloopy PVA glue and some coloured paper and a black pen. Whoa! Now, to make your pirate-shaped treasure chest like this one here, we need to get our box and cover it completely in light brown paint. And when it's dry, we can stick pasta hair all over the top of it like this. So take your pasta, dip it into the gloopy glue, and then just stick it on the top. There we go. Fantastic. You can do any hairstyle you like. Now, to make your pirate ears, we need a piece of paper that's the same colour as your painted box. So let's have a look. Ah, yes. Now we need to fold it in half. There we go. And we're going to draw our ear shape starting at the open edge of the fold. There. Let's start off with a rectangle. There we go. And now let's draw the ear shape. Let's add some extra details. Now we can cut this out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Oh, yeah. Unfold the paper to give you two ear shapes. Now, if we fold along this rectangle here, 
it will give us a flap like that. Brilliant! Let's put on some gloopy glue and then stick it to the side of our box. Now you're ready to draw your pirate's face. This pirate is going to have an eye patch and some stubble. And how about a pirate's hat, like this? Get a piece of black paper and fold it in half. There we go. And then we're going to draw a hat shape with a white pencil, but making sure that the top of the hat touches the fold. Right, here we go. Perfect. Now we're going to cut this shape out very carefully, but make sure that you don't cut along the fold because we want the two pieces to stay together this time. Now we can add some details with white paint. You could paint a white eye, some teeth, and even a skull and crossbone on the hat. And when it's all dry, open up your hat and stick it on top of the pasta hair with gloopy glue. And there you have it, your very own pirate treasure chest. Ooh <laughs> and you can try all sorts of designs. How about a long-haired pirate with woolly hair? Or even an old pirate with cotton wool hair and a cotton wool moustache. All that's missing now is the treasure. Ooh, <laughs> hey, hey, let's have a look. Oh, nice. All right, all right, keep your pirate hat on. <laughs> hey. I'm just having a bit of a tidy up. I always pride myself on having a lovely, neat and tidy home. <laughs> Ooh, what, my tissue paper! And what was it that made that noise that made me jump? Oh, look! It's an amazing aeroplane! Wait a minute. Amazing aeroplanes and terrific tissue paper? That gives me a great idea. Let's try something. Try making a perfect parachute mobile where you can be the skydiver. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Come on. <laughs> some coloured paper and a black pen. a ball of modelling clay, a sharp pencil, and a paper or polystyrene bowl. Some sticky tape and some glue. Some wool and some tissue paper. And finally, a picture of yourself. Whoa! <laughs> Now, to make your very own parachute mobile, complete with its own skydiver, like this handsome chap here, we have to start off by drawing a body shape on some coloured paper or card. First, draw a head shape. This one's going to have pointy hair, just like mine. Then draw two arms sticking up in the air and two legs with boots on the end. Now we can cut this body shape out, but be careful, scissors are sharp. Then stick on thin strips of coloured paper like this onto the body shape. These are going to be the straps on the skydiver's suit. Stick them all on and trim off the extra bits. Now you're ready to turn your skydiver into anyone you want. Very carefully, 
cut just the head part of a photograph and stick it on top of your body on the head shape here. Now for the parachute. For that, we need to make a hole in the centre of our bowl about here. And for that, we're going to use a bowl of modelling clay and a sharp pencil. Now, if you put the modelling clay down first, put the bowl on top, and then very carefully push our pencil through the bowl into the clay, that makes a hole. Excellent. We need to make another four holes now. We're going to make one here, 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 and here. Now take four pieces of wool. These need to be the same length. There we go. And we're going to tie a big knot at the end of each piece. Now we need to carefully thread these pieces of wool through the holes at the edge of the bowl so the pieces hang underneath, like this. This is a little bit tricky, so you can always ask an adult to help you. When you've threaded the wool through the holes in the edges, tie a knot in a longer piece of wool to go through the hole in the centre of the bowl. But this time, thread it the other way, like this, so that this piece of wool can hold up your bowl. Now we need to cover the bowl with a piece of tissue paper. Any colour will do. You can decide, but I think this green will look good. Before we cover it, though, we need to make another hole in the middle. So let's get our modelling clay and gently push the pencil through. Here we go. There's our hole. And this will help us thread our wool through. Great. Make sure the wool pieces on the edges are pulled out. And then we can wrap the tissue paper around and stick it into position with sticky tape. Next, we need to attach our skydiver to the parachute. So, take two bits of wool from one side of the bowl to the back of the nearest hand, and then do the same on the other side. And when it's finished, turn it over. And now you can hang it up wherever you like. <laughs> Brilliant! And why not try some other ideas? You can skydive in your favourite outfit, like this one. Or why not try a rocket flying through space? Or even a skydiving elephant using a bigger bowl for its parachute. And it gives me another fantastic idea. Are you ready? One, two, three. Whoa! <laughs> this is great fun. <laughs> but I better get back home. <laughs> hey, who turned out the lights? <sighs> what a lovely sunny day. It's time I gave my plant a bit of a watering. <laughs> yes, my plants love water. <laughs> mm, but I don't. Who said that? Me. It's Bernard the bug. Oh, hello, Bernard. Sorry, did I splash you with the water there? Just a bit, yeah. <laughs> oh. But never mind. It's time for me to fly away anyway. <laughs> OK, bye, Bernard. Bye-bye, Mr Maker. <laughs> oh, careful, Bernard. That window's not... <laughs> oh. Open. Bernard, are you all right? No, I'm all right now. Just let me be. No, 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 hang on. No, oh, here we go. Oh, poor old Bernard. He never looks where he's going. <laughs> but still, he's given me a great idea. Let's make something. Make your very own hilarious gloopy splat bug to stick on a window or a door. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. An old baking tray, some pink cards and a felt-tip pen. PVA gloopy glue and a paintbrush. Some googly eyes that I got from the shop earlier. 
and some glitter and some sequins. Now, to make your very own splat bug, like this one here, you need to get yourself a baking tray and then some gloopy glue and add a big dollop right in the middle. There we go. Now, using the end of a paintbrush, we can flick out our gloopy glue to make a splat shape. <laughs> there. Now, we can add our googly eyes on top. And we can even add some sequins and glitter. Now we can add a tongue to our splat bug. And we do that by drawing a tongue shape on some pink card. Now we're going to cut this out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Hey. Now gently place the tongue into the gloopy splat mixture. Now we can leave it to dry overnight. Good night! <laughs> Morning! <laughs> and when it's dry, you can very gently peel off your splat bug from the baking tray. Here it comes. There. Give it a little shake. And there you have it! A perfect gloopy splat bug. And the great thing about gloopy splat bugs is that you can stick them anywhere. By using some sticky tape, you could stick a splat bug on a book. This one's a different splat shape and it's got blue and gold glitter. Or you can stick one on a window, like this blue one. Gloopy splat bugs, they look fantastic anywhere.